Hello YouTube, it's Mr. Mags here, back with another Stupid Nintendo article. Today, I'll be going over the article titled, Nintendo should get rid of the Switch console and only have the Switch Lite, according to Michael Pachter. Now, as you can see from the date that this was uploaded, I am a little over a month late to actually making this video. And that is for a specific reason that I'll get to later on in the video, but I have wanted to talk about this topic for over a month now. I've just been waiting for the right time to do it, and now is the time. Again, I'll get to why in just a little bit. But the second little thing is that I am not doing my normal uh, Super Nintendo article thing with this video. Normally, I would go over a dumb article, make fun of the author, make fun of the, you know, the the art, the website that it was posted on, and just have a fun time just going over a dumb opinion that some rando on the internet decided to put on the internet. This is different. It's because this article is on the website Gaming Bolt, and I... I, this is the first I've heard of Gaming Bolt. Um, I don't know anything about them, but this video is not going to be directed at Gaming Bolt. It's not going to be directed at the uh, the the author of the article itself. This will be directed entirely at Michael Pachter. Michael Pachter is one of those people in the gaming industry who for some reason has just kind of stuck around for years, even though literally every single thing he has ever said has just been wrong, or at the very least misguided. He calls himself a video, a video game analyst, like a market analyst for the video game sphere, but almost every single thing he says is either wrong or misguided. For example, back in the 3DS days, granted the 3DS didn't have the best time out of the gate, but he was certain that the Vita would crush, crush the 3DS and that Nintendo should just kind of stop doing handhelds because the 3DS started so badly. They proved, you know, the 3DS proved him wrong thereafter. He was right when he said that the, the Wii U was you know failing and it and it did obviously but then he also said they should stop making consoles and now the switch is exploding out of the gate and doing just fantastic still and now and he's not just wrong about nintendo stuff it's it's essentially anything he talks about in the gaming environment he's wrong about but it most notable when it comes to Nintendo stuff. He's just very, very negative and pessimistic in general when it comes to Nintendo stuff. So now, even though he's been wrong both times about how Nintendo should stop making handhelds and home consoles, because the 3DS proved him wrong and the Switch proved him wrong, he's now saying that Nintendo should just straight up stop making the console version of the Switch and only make the Switch Lite. So again, I'm going to read this, and I'm not going to target any of my, uh, I'll say anger, at the author of the article, only towards Michael Pachter for his dumb opinions. So, let's now go into how I normally do these articles, and just read it. I just think that a portable-only switch makes the most sense, says in industry analyst Michael Pachter. Okay, that's as far as like you know a catchy headline to get readers invested. Sure, that that checks out. As a hybrid machine that can be used as both a portable handheld machine and a home console, the Nintendo Switch has a unique appeal to a wide market and also to Nintendo, who have been able to unify their handheld and console software pipeline to deliver more content for a single machine. So I will make one little caveat here. So technically speaking, Nintendo hasn't been the best about uh, bringing necessarily more content now than they had when they had the 3DS and the Wii U. 
but I would I would almost certainly argue that the the content that we have been getting is overall on par on par or most often better than the stuff we got on the Wii U and 3DS. So it's so they've been more focused, if anything. They haven't necessarily been able to put out more content, but it has been more focused, and I think personally, better overall. But you get the idea. The Switch has been great overall for Nintendo. Of course, the Switch offers a cheaper alternative with the Switch Lite, which also which removes the console's docking capabilities, turning into a handheld-only portable system. And according to WebBush Securities analyst Michael Pachter, that device is the one that Nintendo should ideally be focusing all their efforts on. So, back, like, back when the Switch, I think, I think it was before the Switch even came out, I made a video on this channel saying that Nintendo has a great thing with the Switch, but I think that they should make a handheld-only version of it. And yeah, this was like back in like probably November of uh, like a couple of weeks after it came out. Uh, they should make a handheld-only version of it in order to sell separately so they can still get the same revenue. Uh, like when they had a, a Wii U and a 3DS, just in case one doesn't do super well, you still have the cheaper option, just, you know, so you have that good revenue stream, and just so people can have a more dedicated handheld experience. And I'm not going to say I was the only one who predicted that, but clearly Nintendo also thought that was a good idea, and the Switch Lite has been pretty successful so far. Speaking with Gaming Bolt in a recent interview, Patrick said that the Switch's hybrid concept isn't one that gets a lot of use, and that the smart thing for Nintendo to do would be to drop the console side of things and turn the Switch into a purely handheld device. So, I'm not going to go into that right now. The The actual Pactor interview part starts right next, but just keep in mind, this entire interview is going to revolve around the fact that Michael Pactor thinks that the Switch should no longer be sold, and they should focus solely on the Switch Lite, because he believes that people don't use the hybrid concept, they don't play on the TV, people more so play on the handheld part of it. Okay. Starting the interview. I don't really understand the whole hybrid concept, Michael Hector told Gaming Bolt. So, Michael, you don't understand the hybrid concept. Does, I assume he has a Switch. I assume this man who is a gaming analyst ha at least owns a Switch. What do you mean you don't understand the hybrid concept? You play on the TV when you're home? You take it with you on the go or or for whatever, you know, on the toilet or just whatever else you would use your handheld for. If you have guests over and you all want to play a party game or smash or whatever, you plug it into the TV. If you want to have a more, you know, intimate, more personal gaming experience, you just pop in headphones with the, with the tablet, boom. You want to play games that, you know, certain games offer higher frame rates and better graphics on the TV, there you go. If you don't care much about graphics, and, you know, you want to use it for portable purposes, take it with you. What's hard to understand? I, I, I would say I probably use the Switch about 50-50, both maybe 60-40 handheld, but, like, I, actually, my, maybe so overall average more so 50-50. Like, I utilize the Switch features perfectly, and it makes complete sense to me. The only reason... I personally feel the only reason you wouldn't understand the hybrid concept is if you just haven't played one, but whatever, I'm getting ahead of myself. I think that was something Iwata did to differentiate the Switch, and he wanted to have a console that could go back and forth from console to portable. But I don't think most people play it in both modes. I would say that maybe 20% of Switch owners play both modes. And I think most Switch owners play it handheld only. 
So I honestly don't understand the whole point of the hybrid. Who cares? Play it as a handheld. Okay. So. Michael Pachter is just pulling random numbers out of nowhere. He just assumes that only 20% of people play it in both nodes. And just assumes that most people play handheld only. Even though Nintendo has released a graphic showcasing how people play their Switch. I, first, I scoured the internet, but I could not find that uh, article or that image anywhere on there, on the internet. <laughs> but, like, I know I remember either, I think it was, like, sometime in 2018, Nintendo released a graphic showcasing how users use their system. I don't know if it's some kind of uh, survey or if they can tell just or some kind of like data from the system itself that sent to Nintendo. But regardless, I believe I remember about 50% play in both modes pretty regularly with the rest being majority one or the other. And just to emphasize this point, Nintendo Life, who did report on this article, they created a poll on their on their website, kind of as like a uh, as a companion piece to this interview, just to kind of ask their their viewers which do they play more handheld or docked mode, and wouldn't you know it? Approximately 7% do 100% handheld, 8% do 100% docked. Okay, I wasn't expecting, you know, that many people to do 100% of either, but the highest percent here is 90% docked, 10% handheld at 18%. 11% do 80% docked, 20% handheld. 10% do 70% docked, 30% handheld. 9% do 50-50, and then another 9% do 10% dog, 90% handheld. Now granted, this poll is only of a little under 18,000 votes. So it's not a huge sample size, but you can get a general idea based on these people who took this survey. This is how they play their Switch. The majority of the people play it in mostly docked mode, but there's still a pretty good spread of people who play in both. There is this 9% that play in, in docked 10% and mostly handheld, but still, that's way less than the 20% who play in both modes, and that's, uh, that's definitely not a majority who play handheld only. Clearly the majority play more in dock mode. So again, this isn't the BL end all, but it's you get a general idea based on the 17,900 vote poll on Nintendo Life. Just you kind of get the idea that Nintendo that Michael Pactor doesn't really know what he's talking about. He's literally just pulling these numbers out of nowhere on the fly just to sound smart. That's his entire thing just making up random crap and saying people should do stuff based on, even though he is a gaming analyst, he bases all of his opinions on just fabricated information. Anyway, so you get, you get why I'm annoyed by this. <laughs> Moving on to the article. And Nintendo isn't that smart, he continued. So you never know what they will do next. I'm going to cut it off right there. I, I'm i not going to say that Nintendo is perfect. Far from it. But to say that they aren't that smart, even though they've been in the gaming industry for over 40, I think, yeah, probably 35, 40 years now, and they've 
that's been surviving this whole time. Anytime it looks like they're going to go down, they just kind of keep going. Like, the GameCube wasn't doing too hot, but you, know, you had the Game Boy Advance that was keeping them afloat, and the Wii and DS just exploded. And the Wii U looked like it wasn't doing too hot, but the 3DS was doing fine, and the Switch is over here killing it. Like, yes, every single decision they've made with the Switch hasn't been perfect. But, to, but just semantically speaking, saying that they're not that smart, so you don't know what they're going to do next... Like, I'm not over here trying to say that Sony or Microsoft, you know, are dumb or anything, but, like, it feels like not knowing what they're going to do next, being creative, being, you know, spontaneous with these kind of decisions and, like, you know, wowing people with, with just stuff that you never thought of, that's not exactly, I wouldn't, I would personally call that smart. If anything, it personally, to me, would feel that you would call someone not smart if they just kind of do the same thing over and over and over again. They don't want to try to innovate or evolve in any way. Again, I'm not throwing shade at Microsoft or Sony, but just on the face value of this statement, I feel Nintendo kind of would be the smarter one for trying new things and not always sticking the landing, but right now the Switch is thriving. Whatever. Moving on. So you never know what they'll do next, but I think the smart thing would be to get rid of the Switch console and only have the Switch Lite. Get rid of the docking station. Get rid of the get rid of playing on the TV. Maybe offer a Fire Stick style dongle for those who do want to play play it on the TV. But I just think that a portable only Switch makes the most sense. It's the cheapest to make, and they would make the screen nicer and better and the build quality better. Now, on face value, what he's suggesting isn't exactly the worst. Saying that if they focused entirely on handheld, made the screen, made the, made the little you know handheld-only system bet as good as it possibly could be, doesn't sound like the worst idea, I think, if there is a Switch Pro or, or like whatever next generation of Switch would be. I think it will have at least a 1080p screen. It's just generally better build quality. But that's just kind of how technology goes. So on paper, it's not the worst idea. But he's still basing this claim off of numbers he just pulled out of nowhere. And are just saying it makes the most sense for Nintendo. Because he obviously knows Nintendo's financials right now. And he thinks that even though they're making a lot of money on Switch right now, they would make infinitely more if they only did Switch Lite. Based on numbers that he pulled out of nowhere saying that only 20% play it on TV. And, sorry, only 20% do both modes and most people only play on the handheld. Which is not the case. So, last little bit of the interview. Speaking about next-gen and what Nintendo could have in store, Pactor said, I am not sure what we will see for the next generation. If there will be if there will be upgrade to processing power, they should at least put some flash memory in it so you can download some games and not have to screw around with cartridges. So, I will kind of admit, the Switch needs more storage on the actual system. 32 gigs is nothing. Why, why did they think only having 32 gigs for a portable system in this day and age? I feel like um, that that was a bit of an oversight. I know SD cartridges, sorry, SD, you know, SD cards are a lot, a lot cheaper than they used to be. I think I got my 200 gig one for like 25 bucks. So it really isn't that big of a deal to upgrade storage, but you could have eaten the cost a little bit. At least 64 gigs, I know. It's still not a lot, but it's at least something. But whatever. Like, that's actually a decent thing that if they do next-gen, uh, they need they need to have more storage on there. Especially if they want to court more third parties, which their games are getting insanely large. Even the Doom games that are on Switch, I think, have, like, an 8-gig download uh, on top of the, like... On top of the the 
the game itself is another eight gigs. Like it's it's kind of insane. So yeah, put some more storage in there. But I think the cartridges are fine. I think like maybe they are a little small. I know my roommate actually lost uh, one or two games just from just bad circumstances. Like he just dropped them and just couldn't find them or whatever. So like it happens. But like there's some stuff in this interview that I feel isn't the worst. But the crux of the the crux of the his argument is Nintendo should get rid of the Switch as it is and only do Switch Lite because he believes that A, most people only play on the handheld version, and he believes that it would make Nintendo a lot more money. So you might be wondering. You know, I analyzed the article well enough. I gave all my points. Uh, I have nothing more to say. Why did he wait so long to make this video? Why is there still like 20 plus more <laughs> minutes to go on this video? I don't, I'm saying that as I'm recording. I don't know how long it'll be, but it's, it's not ending here is what I'm getting at. Like, why did he wait so long to make this video? Because... I wanted hard numbers to prove to Michael that the Switch and Switch Lite combo is the way to go. And if anything, having just the regular Switch as it is by itself might end up actually being, if you were to go with one or the other, having the Switch Prime being the only one in the market would be the way to go. So... This was uploaded on October 22nd. So I decided I was going to wait five weeks after this article came out, specifically to tabulate data from the Japanese, uh, the Japanese sales. So Japan is one of the very few regions that gives out hard data every single week that you don't have to pay for it. Like it's, they're very generous with giving out their very specific numbers uh, per, per week. So I waited five weeks just to see how the Switch had sold. And I know this might not be the best, uh, the, it might not be the best experiment to do since we, since this did encompass part, you know, going into the holiday season. But also, maybe it kind of does because, you know, he said that the reason the Switch Lite was better is because it's cheaper and more people want it. So if in the holiday season, assuming the, the stock is about equal, which I'm sure there's not as many Switch Lights, but I don't think they're selling out of every single Switch Lite they put out there, but whatever. Assuming that the Switch and Switch Lite stock is comparable, the Switch Lite should be selling more in a holiday season if that's the one that's more appealing. So, starting with the week ending November 1st, starting October 26th in Japan. This is the week that Pikmin 3 were released. So, the Switch sold 66,000 units. Over 66,000 units. The Switch Lite sold over 20,000. 66.6,000, 20 thousand for the Switch Lite. Okay. So, you know, about three times as much for the normal Switch. Maybe the Switch Lite just didn't have as much talk there in that, in that uh, week. But as you can see down here, those numbers are... That ratio is fairly consistent. It's about the same there, about three times <laughs> as far as like the last week goes. Uh, so, but you know, maybe just they had a, in October they just had, you know, slow stock. Maybe that's just why that happened. Now, the week ending uh, November 8th, starting on November 2nd. The Switch Lite, again, sold only 20,000 units. Actually went down a little bit from the previous week. Previous week it sold 20.2, here it sells 
the Switch itself sold 119,000 units. Which is a lot more than three times. That's almost 100,000 more units than the Switch Lite. And regardless, so I'm just going to go and say this right here, regardless of which one was selling more, this right here, both together, is still all profit. Like, I almost guarantee you, if Nintendo were just selling the Switch as it was, it would maybe get a couple of more, like maybe 125000 But the the Switch Lite is almost, almost guaranteeing adding, you know, tens of thousands of units to the switch to switches sold every single week let's even let's just say that would go up 130,000 that's still 10,000 switch switch lights that are sold on top of switches sold so that's all profit for Nintendo it makes sense to have both now here is where the fun begins because this, I also wanted to wait until after the PS5 and Xbox Series X were released. Although the Series X, you know, didn't do very well in Japan. No surprise to anybody. But I was wanted to see how the Switch would do the week that the PS5 was released. And obviously the PS5 has had shortage constraints. Uh, or, you know, circumstances just kind of worldwide maybe would make it to the PS5 wouldn't sell as much as it normally would, but just to kind of get an idea of how people, uh, of, of what the demand of the Switch would be relative to the PS5. Would the Switch demand go up or down after the PS5 is out? Like, do people, would people just immediately drop the Switch as soon as the PS5 comes out? We'll see. And the answer is, Almost. At least the week of. I believe it was 64 weeks. Or it was like... I don't remember exactly, but it, no, it was over two years. I think this week, the week ending November 15th, was the first time in two years that the Switch wasn't the at the top most sold in any given week of console sales. PS5 sold 103,900 units. The Switch Prime sold 93,671. The Switch Lite sold 22,596. And there was there was a little bit of a dip for normal for normal Switch units, but there was a, a bit of an increase from Switch Lights. That could kind of imply that people who are buying the PS5 might also want a complimentary system but because they just put five hundred dollars down on the ps5 they go for the cheaper system the switch Lite, just so they can still play switch games that very well could be it although if that is the case you would think the switch light would increase even more i'm not really sure about that but if th if that were in order for Michael Pachter's argument to be completely sound, the Switch Lite's numbers probably would have needed to at least double in order to justify only having the Switch Lite as a companion piece to another system, or even just handheld only. It would need to at least double, and it didn't do that. It went up a little bit, but it didn't double. So, the PS5 is out. So, now that the PS5 is out, how do things go for Switch going forward? The week that Hyrule Warriors came out, PS5 sold 32,335. And uh, although I should also admit, I should also say that the PS5 digital version sold 10,556. So overall, uh, a little over 42,000, almost 43,000. The Switch Lite sold 28,051, so again, a pretty decent increase from the previous week. Although the Switch sold almost 50,000 more units 
than it did the previous week. Sorry, over 50,000 units more than the previous week. Closer to 60,000, actually. So even though the PS5 is out and the hype is there for these systems, the Switch Prime sold 150,000 units, almost a hundred, yeah, over 125,000 more than the Switch Lite. 123 ish. 123,000 units more than the Switch Lite. Yet you're saying that you want to have only the Switch Lite on the market. Now, the most recent example the week ending November 29th, there was a bit of a dip, but still 117,000 Switch units. 27,000 Switch lights, and the PS5 is still selling decently. There obviously was uh, stock shortages, but you get the idea. Even though next gen is here, it's out, people are excited for it, the Switch is still dominating on all categories, and the Switch Lite, though it is still making Nintendo profit, it is still chugging along, doing very well, is not doing near as well as the Switch. So, Michael, I understand that you've been doing gaming analysis for way longer than I have. I understand that you probably have at least a, a better idea of how things sell, how people play games just in general. So maybe you actually had a decent reasoning as to why you believe the majority of people only play, play on Switch Lite and that only 20% use both. Maybe there is a valid reason for that. Although, since you didn't offer any hard numbers, aside from that maybe 20% that you threw out there, I thought I would go out of my way to give you empirical data showing that A, the majority of people, at least according to this poll, use the majority of people use it in docked mode more often, and also hard numbers based on at least one region, hard numbers that the Switch Lite, sorry, the Switch consistently sells three times the Switch Lite, if not well more. Three, three times on a, on a weaker week, and then even during the holiday season, the Switch Lite just doesn't sell as much. And again, that could be because there just isn't as much Switch Lite stock out there. But you get the idea. <laughs> They're not, Nintendo is not going to put out systems if there isn't super high demand for it. This clearly shows there is way higher demand even in Japan, which Japan is the epicenter of handheld gaming. They still prefer Switch Prime. So what do you all think of this? Do you think, I don't know what I'm talking about, do you think that the Switch Lite is the way Nintendo should go? They should just drop a console gaming entirely and instead only put out Switch Lite systems? Or do you think Michael Pachter is wrong and, and I am right that the, uh, Nintendo should stick with both and just make more money having both? Yeah, that just makes sense to me. Have both, or if you are going to have one for some reason, clearly the Switch Prime is the one to go with. So yeah, leave all your thoughts down below. I'd like to have a discussion about all of this. And again, no shade to Gaming Bolt, no shade to the author of this article. Uh, this is all directed towards Michael Pachter. Just, please, I beg you, just, you've been doing this for so long. You're respected in the industry for some reason, that's beyond me, but like, Please try to know what you're talking about, okay? <laughs> Until next time, see you later.